Hey everyone, welcome back to another Suavic lifestyle video. My name is Venelin, and in this one, I'm going to show you how you can create the beautiful charts that you're seeing on your screen. And those charts are going to represent the performance of the different LOMs that we're going to be evaluating on our custom data set that we have created within the previous video. Let's get started. If you want to get access to the complete source code of this video, as well as a complete AI Academy, go and subscribe to MLX Pro. There you're going to find the complete AI Academy that starts from how you can set up your local machine, how you can learn what PyTorch is, the basics and fundamentals of Python, statistics, classical machine learning. Then you're going to deploy a complete machine learning project from start to finish and then you're going to learn about LOMs, RAX, CAX, AI agents and agentic workflows. So if you want to become a better AI engineer, go and subscribe to MLX Pro. Thank you. To run our evaluation experiments, we are going to be using MLflow to store the results of the evaluations and for the LOMs themselves. I'm going to be using OAMA and Langchain. We're going to be evaluating four different models that all experiments have been completed on my local M3 Pro machine. Also, I'm going to be using a Jupyter notebook in which I'm going to be running the experiments. But in real world examples, you might want to convert this notebook into a script. And in this way, this is going to be a bit easier for you to run and probably leave as a long running tasks since some of those evaluations might be a bit too long to complete in one sitting. Okay, so let's start with the imports right here. You're going to see that we are going to be using the MFO lang chain. And one interesting thing is the inclusion of the Levenstein library. We are going to be using the Jarl Winker distance which is going to tell us how different the tickers that the financial news are going to be from the extracted data and those that are really within the data set. From there, I'm going to be starting with geometry 1 billion parameter model. This is going to be the first experiment that I am going to run and a temperature for that as well as a experiment name. In this case, this is going to be financial news classification eval. So this is going to be presented within your MFO visualization when you run the UI. From there, I'm going to be loading the data set that we have created within the last video. And to recall, these are actually financial news from roughly 10th of August up to until 22nd or 3rd. And within those news, you have the title of the news the first two paragraphs of the body of the news, the list of tickers and a sentiment that was classified or extracted by Gemini 2.5 flash white. We're going to be comparing the different models that we're going to be evaluating against the predictions of this model. Keep in mind that in practice, you might still need to do a couple of iterations over this dataset to make sure that the extracted sentiment is truly something that a human would push into the data set. Other than that, we are only interested in these tickers of the companies, Nvidia, Amazon, Tesla, etc. You can see those on your own. So keep that in mind that we are going to be requiring the OM to extract only from these tickers. From there, I'm using the init chat model to run the model connection to my local OAMA instance. And keep in mind that I have already downloaded all of the available models that I need for the evaluation. From there, I'm going to be creating this structured uh, response that is actually a pedantic based model. I'm going to be setting the sentiment possible to extract positive, neutral or negative and then a list of tickers that the model is going to be evaluating and extracting for us. After you run this, you need to call 
LM dot with structured output and this will help the OLAMA instance via the LangChain implementation to return the responses of the model only within the JSON provided right here. So the prompt is very similar to what we had within the dataset building video. But the difference here is that I'm also specifying the valid tickers that the model need to extract from. So we are reducing the amount of tickers that the model can choose from. But this is done only within the prompt. Of course, you can, uh, for example, enforce this in a bit of a stricter way by providing, for example, a list of enums here. I haven't tried this but uh, it should work and this might actually help you a bit with the evaluation of these models. So this is the example response, the sentiment and the tickers. So after I run this, I'm going to show you the first row within the dataset. Uh, this is exactly again from the dataset that I have just shown you. Then to format our prompt, uh, this is going to be the classify prompt dot format. Uh, here I'm going to be letting the title, the text, and then the list of the valid tickers, which are going to be provided right here within the prompt. So then I'm going to be running my local instance and get an instance of the analysis that we're going to get. And this is the prediction that the model gave us along with the NVIDIA, Amazon, Tesla, Meta, etc. tickers that the model has actually uh, outputted. And as you can see, this is not a very good, uh, at least as uh, the amount of tickers that we got, it pretty much gave us the response with, I believe, pretty much all of the available tickers. So this is a 1 billion parameter model. I wouldn't expect for such a small model to be always correct. This is why we're doing the evaluation, of course. And here also you can see that the title here is this one stock market week ahead, Nvidia dollar stores and Canada's big five banks. So we can actually check the raw sentiment here. In this case, the prediction is very on point. We are comparing it within our dataset value, which also is neutral. On the only ticker here is NVIDIA, but uh, here we're getting the list of tickers. The actual evaluation is going to be comprised of two parts. We're going to be evaluating both the sentiment and the list of tickers that we got from the prediction and compare it with the values from the dataset. First, I'm going to be starting with the sentiment metrics. Here, I'm measuring a couple of things. Accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score. Uh, note that all of those scores and metrics are actually provided by the SKA Wern library. So I'm not going to be implementing this uh, within this notebook. And in order to get those metrics, I'm going to be first calculating the accuracy score then I'm going to be uh, getting this precision recall F-score support. And here you can get the precision, the recall and the F1 for the true sentiments and the predicted sentiments. Note that since here we are doing not binary classification, but we have three different categories, I'm going to be averaging the F-score with a weighted parameter. And if we get a zero division a warning or exception, uh, I'm going to be replacing that with zero. As I think that these are pretty sensible values for this use case, but keep that in mind that you might want to adjust this in any way uh, that might fit what you have. So uh, here I'm going to be just returning the sentiment metrics, which is a data quest that I have created just for this one. And the next one, is going to be the list of the tickers that the model is giving us. And in this case, I'm going to be using the Jero Winkler distance. In this case, I want to measure how similar those list of tickers are. And in this case, also, I want to punish or penalize if we got a ticker that is 
with a prefix very different to the ticker from the predicted values that is again with very different prefix. In this case, I have a couple of examples here. If we get the completely uh, same string, you can see that the distance is uh, equal to one. Then if we have different character, in this case, T and H are flipped, you can see that we have still a very high score. But now if we, for example, remove the W at the start, and add uh, or remove the Y right here, you can see that the score is drastically reduced. So as the differences are more at the start of this substring, uh, you're going to see lower and lower scores. And uh, again, for something that is completely different, we're going to be seeing that since these two strings don't have common characters, they're distance of, again by general weaker distance is equal to zero so keep that in mind when we're doing the evaluation and the evaluation itself is going to contain the average general weaker similarity and the exact match accuracy so in order to calculate this uh, this is a bit of a hacky way and in practice you might implement this in a bit more um, solid way to calculate probably the amount of misses and uh, probably amount of items within the true and the predicted tickers. But in this case, what I'm doing is sort the true tickers with the predicted tickers. And then I'm going to be uh, using the general winkler similarity right here between the two lists. And I am going to also storing the exact matches if we have exactly the true tickers and the predicted tickers. This sorting right here might be a bit of an overkill since I'm storing this in sets, but I just want to make sure that the lists are actually ordered. Then I'm calculating the average general winkler similarity along with the exact match accuracy, as you can see here. And uh, this is going to again return our uh, data class. Our evaluation loop is going to be now much simpler thanks to the helper functions that we have just created. And here I start by setting the experiment name to the MFO library. Also, I'm going to be starting a run that is going to be this experiment that we are going to run. I'm going to be logging the model name, the prompt template, the date set size. And then in this loop right here, I'm going to be calling the prediction for each of the available rows within the date set. Then I'm going to be creating article analysis from the predicted values and those from the true values that are within the data set. From there, I'm going to be adding both of these values to this list right here. I'm going to be calling the calculate sentiment metrics function and the calculate ticker metric function to calculate both of the metrics for the sentiment and then for the ticker metrics. Then I'm going to be simply adding this to the walk metric and I'm going to be doing the same thing for the general inquiry similarity for the tickers and the exact match accuracy. So this took uh, roughly 20 to 30, 35 minutes to run for each model. And let me show you the results in MO4. To run the server, I'm going to be entering the directory that the notebook is running from, and I'm going to be running MFO server host and port parameters, then just press enter. And then you're going to be presenting with a new UI like this. Since I already run the experiment with the four different models, when you enter the experiment that we have just created, you're going to get a table like this. And here you can see a very nice concise summary of the duration of the runs right here. You can see that the Quen 3 4 billion parameter model took roughly two times more or even a bit more actually than the 1.7 billion parameter model. And this is pretty much expected, but it is nice that you have these metrics right here. And then you're going to get to the metrics themselves and you can compare the results right here. Of course, you can also uh, look at the different columns right here 
And one important thing here is that you can go to this chart view that I have shown you at the start of the video. And here you can see how good the different models are compared to one another. As you can see, the Quen3 4 billion parameter model is leading uh, pretty much the, all of the models. But what is very interesting, at least what I found here, is that the Gemma3 1 billion parameter model is at second place. Keep in mind that our judge model is actually Gemini, so it might be the case that this Gemma model is performing somewhat similarly due to the some sort of shared training data to the Gemini 2.5 flush white model, but this is just a guess, of course. And then you can see I have also tried Wama 3.2, this is a 3 billion parameter model, but it is a bit old now. And uh, you can tell that even the Quen3 1.7 billion parameter model is now beating this Wama 3.2 model. At least uh, this is on this task. Then here you can see the drastic difference for the ticker exact match accuracy. And uh, here you can see something a bit surprising that the Quen3 a uh, 1.7 billion parameter model is actually uh, performing the best. Then we have the 4 billion parameter model and we have some small values here for the Gemma and the Wama 3.2. But if you go to the general one core similarity, uh, you can see that actually the scores are now much higher. So this is it for this video. We've seen how we can build a baseline of evaluations with our prompt and four different models that are very wide to run. And in under hour and a half, you can run a couple of models on a local laptop and see the results for yourself. Of course, this might be applied to a whole lot other problems, but this is the general approach to get a baseline. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can optimize our prompts and try to get a bit better results compared to what we have with this baseline. Thank you for watching, guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Also, join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down in the description of this video. If you want to get access to the complete source code and a complete AI engineering academy, go and subscribe to MXL Pro. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.